Heather McDonald has got the juices scoop. When you're on the road, when you're on the go, Juicy Scoop is the show to know. She talks Hollywood tales, her real life mister, segment serial data, and serial sister. You'll be addicted and addicted fast to the number one tabloid real life podcast. Listen in, listen up. Woo woo. Heather McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I made it back home out of Casper, Wyoming, and a very interesting thing happened. I was stuck at the Casper airport, as was everyone else. All these flights were delayed, and Casper is kind of a small airport. And um, anyway, I met these hot farmers and this FBI agent, and as the years, the hours went on, they were like, we're not going to make it back to Bakersfield no matter what tonight. So they made a reservation at a restaurant in uh, Denver. And I said, well, maybe I'll just go to Denver and stay the night with my friend Christine, and who opens for me a lot on the road. You may have seen her, Christine Letterman. She's very funny. And maybe we'll join these guys for, you know, this cute dinner. And, um, you know, some of them were married. Some of them weren't. Some of them were drinking. One guy wasn't drinking at all because he's like, I might have to drive we're going to rent a car if this plane isn't here, like in the air to come get us in the next 10 minutes. We're going to rent a car. We're going to drive. And I said, do you mind if I go with you? And do you mind if I sit next to the FBI agent? Um, and, you know, you're going to have to wait till Thursday because I'm going to have Chris on. And I want to tell him what happened after that and get his reaction um, because it's a pretty exciting story. I saw Chris last night, Chris and Sarah, and we watched the Oscars. Well, we didn't really watch it at all. I missed the moment that everybody's talking about, which is just the most annoying moment. I guess Jennifer Lawrence fell on the carpet again, and she, like, grabbed this woman's body and almost took the other woman ahead of her down with her. And that, I mean, I have to be honest, I wasn't totally watching, um, but Francis, Francis McDormand did win for No Man Land. And we did see most of that movie. And she was pretty convincing in the character that she played. She's an excellent actress. So that was great. And, you know, you have a lot of respect for someone that just, you know, always is just so believable as the character. And um, but when I was watching and I said, I know she's going to win the Oscar for this, Peter. I said, but I don't think I'm willing to give up, like, Botox and plastic surgery along the way to look like a convincing character that might be homeless or she's like living in campgrounds and stuff. And Sarah Colonna agreed. And so I said, but the only way we can win an Oscar is either to really let your looks go. I go, but what if we were two plastic surgery obsessed um, madams, like old high class hookers then who became madams? Because a lot of prostitutes get nominated for, um, or sex workers get nominated for Academy Awards. So we're going to go that route, work on that. Um, an exciting thing happened, which Chris will tell you about. This is our night out at Sarah Colonna's house. Everyone is talking about Zac Efron's face, okay? Um, this is what he we knew him to look like, and this is what he looked like this weekend. Total babe still. But did he get filler in his jawline, which I guess a lot of women, but now men are doing to give themselves like a more chiseled jaw, a more angular face. Other people thought maybe it was steroids. I think that, yes, I mean, you just can't deny that the the jaw is different. Look at it here. And then, and now look at it. So I think it's a little bit of weight gain, maturity. And um, and some filler. I really do. I think you got some filler right here. And you know what? I like it. I think it looks good. Go for it. Who cares? Um, there is a new show on Discovery called The Laundry Guy. I have not seen it. My son Drake has reviewed it. And it's about a guy that does laundry. And um, I just can't believe that Dorinda's husband didn't get his own reality show and this guy did as you know Dorinda's husband 
John had that fancy dry cleaning place, Madam something, in uh, New York. And he did not. And this guy beat him to it. So maybe that's why they broke up. Maybe he was like, how did you not get me my, my own reality show, show, Dorinda? I'm really pissed about it. But we want you guys to nominate, write to me, nominate what you think is some of the best worst shows or worst best shows. No, best worst shows. That's what it is. Like, I do a lot of hate watching with my kids and we just can't stop. And I have going to put my list together. Chris is going to bring a couple of his. We're going to talk about it on Thursday. The women have gone. They are on the plane as of yesterday going to Turks and Caicos to do the OG uh, trip. And then this popped up. Jill Zarin joins the all-star cast. Well, it's not true. I texted her this morning along with Allie, her daughter. And I, they, it's nice that they're writing about it, but it's just not true. But, hey, hope maybe next time. Somehow maybe I can get come along. Guys, I read this book. It is Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget, Margaret Josephs. It's so good. And I interviewed her. You're going to listen to it in about one second. Um, anyway, really juicy. And we got into a lot of things that have not been discussed in previous interviews or on the show. So even if you're not familiar with her, I think you'll find her life story um, very, very interesting. We touch lots of different topics, marriage, divorce, cheating, sexual harassment, the housewives, business. It's very good. So guys, remember, if you want more juice, all different tiers every Friday, you go to heathermcdonald.net and you click on Patreon, you join, you change your life. Nobody is ever unhappy who has joined my Patreon. I can honestly say that. It is worth it and I so appreciate it. And here we go with a very juicy interview with Margaret from The Real Housewives in New Jersey. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I am here with a real friend who is a real housewife, Margaret Josephs. How are you? You look gorgeous. Oh, Heather, I'm so excited to be here with you. I wish I was in person, but I'm just excited to be back together again. You look gorgeous. Thank, Thank you. you. So I have read the book, I'm Caviar so Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. And I mean, it's really good. It's really juicy and it like stuck in my head. I read it over the weekend and like I was just thinking so much about so many aspects of it. So, I mean, let's I'm just so, get. I'm so glad you read it. That makes me so happy. It's not I mean, your typical housewife book, right? I mean, I've read a, a lot of the housewives books and I do think. You know, some people have had juicier, more interesting lives than others, you know, and you definitely have had a very juicy life. <laughs> you know, it's just very, ju it's like, oh my God. I mean, so let's just, I found the most interesting stuff about it, maybe because I have been married a really long time. Yes. But I thought the, everything that you shared about your first husband, Jan, yes. and the ups and the downs of that relationship. And, you know, you said before and you say in the book that you guys are still great friends. You're still, you know, co-parenting your adult son, Cooper, as well. You know, and, and we know that his children, two of them still don't talk to you, right? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I text with my older son, Dean, in the book. And, you know, I changed all the names. Too. Right. Uh, but we text. But, yeah, it's it's a, it's a strain for sure. And... So, so my question is, has Jan read the book? Excerpts, but he has not read the book. But Jan is very, um, he knows what happened. He has not read the book. He's happy I put in good pictures of him. He's cute to the fact is he was like, send me that picture. I look amazing. <laughs> like the honeymoon photo? Yes, he loves the honeymoon photo. He's like, I look unbelievable. Um, because... You know, you you wonder, like, if he does really sit down and read all the little things that were really hard because he was part of your business, yet he, like, this is the things I wonder, if he was to really sit down and read it in a way that he's by himself, it's not you telling him, it's not a therapist telling him, and it's years past, does the man ever go, fuck? 
I shouldn't have acted that way. Like there were the, the juiciest, one of the parts that I thought was just so interesting and was your son had an allergic reaction yes. and he was sent to the ER and you're mm-hmm. in the office with him along with Marge Sr. and your two partners or the girls that are always there, Lexi and um, Janine. Janine. There was Janine was there, yeah. Janine. And you're like, oh my God, I have to get to the hospital and you couldn't find your keys and He's just like, well, you got to find him before you leave. And you're like, just give me your car key so I can go. And he was like, no, because then I won't have my car and then I can't go to the gym later. And just, I think it's, I've been in that situation too, where my husband didn't think that what was going on with my sons was as serious as I did. Yes. And, um, and I re- and it was a moment like I was like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, yeah. you know, our kid isn't sick all the time. I mean, you even said you were some you were someone that went to the doctors and stuff a lot. I I wasn't, so it's like, I just thought. And then your mom is there witnessing it, and your mom, I guess, took you or or drove. Yeah, my mother, my mother drove, and I said, "Go, I'm going to meet you." And I had. I was crying, I was shaking, the girls were upset. It was a weird dynamic. I mean, I was always at the hospital and I don't know if Jan is someone who doesn't want to admit something horrible is gonna happen because the horrible thing that's gonna happen is too much for him to bear or or he really just had a weird thing about the car keys. I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but I think when, when he reads it back, he'll be very sad about that, but I mean, I really. That is I mean, I really point. want. I really want Jan to read that. Yes. I really want him to read it and then go, "Wow, you know," because that was a moment where you were like, "I'm fucking done. Yes. Like, I'm it done." Was. And even it though you was. stayed with him for some time after that, and there were still some fun moments, it's like that was just like an unforgivable thing because it's like he was going to teach you a lesson. Because the keys was, you know, something that you guys, you know, fought about, um, that you wouldn't put your keys in the right spot. And um, and that's a very coupley thing. My, yes, husband, yes. my husband doesn't put the keys in the bowl either, you know. <laughs> yeah. I found the keys in the dresser this morning, like on this desk thing. And I had to go to the grocery store and get food for my son because I he's going back to school. And the dog got into the bread and I had no sandwich bread and I have to make him food so yeah. I'm like let me get up at 6 30 so I related to a lot to you being a working mother as I was we're and especially with boys it's yes. like food is like the one thing you can like do for them I agree and it was such <laughs> it was a poignant moment in our relationship and that that's why I put it in there because certain things really stuck out I mean there's endless moments right in a marriage I was with him 20 years right and but certain things stuck out to me that were very pivotal. So I, I'm glad, pivotal, that's not even a word. Okay, yeah. pivotal, pivotal. Yeah, yeah. That stuck out in our marriage. And I'm glad that you picked up on it because I don't think people realize that it, it's those moments that happen that's a turning point. And it could be one thing that just happened. But I, but I think what's kind of important about it is like, you know, like had he is he gonna go back and re wonder and go god i wonder if i could have like not that you're you're obviously who you're yes yes you're where you're supposed to be but like god you know there are these little things that happen in a marriage or a divorce that you know all of a sudden it becomes so t- contentious and you're like i don't care and I, you know and you go that one extra step and and you're in every right to do that. But then now you're off in a place that can't be returned. I, You're right. And I'm going to tell you, Heather, even now we will hash out things. We will talk about things that happened years ago. Mm-hmm. And we've had deep discussion and I've cried about it. And he knows it's sad. He's like, I could, I could have been on the show with you. I, I could have had that life with you. I'm like, you couldn't, <laughs> you know? And, and I think... You know, it's funny that he even thinks that way. And he has a beautiful, fabulous girlfriend. And obviously, Joe and I are madly in love. But I think he does feel sad about certain things, though he hasn't read the book. Because I'm sure now that he's older, I mean, Jan's 74 mm-hmm. now. 
And I think he probably thinks about his life and thinks about certain things because he's a much milder version of himself. And right, and I and I think that definitely happens. I mean, even with my own parents who have passed but were together, you know, for 50 years. And, you know, and people would see them coming to my son's baseball game and they'd be like, your parents are the cutest. And I'm like, they weren't cute in 1988. <laughs> they, weren't <laughs> cute in they weren't cute in 1988. I was like, why aren't you guys getting divorced? He's horrible to you. You're, it's, you know, like I would, I would think that. And now I'm like, wow, my mom sucked it up. But, you know, and put up, probably put up with stuff. And he probably thought he put up with stuff. But in the end, like, so then you, you kind of go, you know, what, what can't one, but once you cross a line or, or it's feel true. that way, then it's you can't true. go back. But for the people that haven't crossed that line, I think it's kind of a good tale because I it think is. you, you can stop this. You can. And I think yeah. people could learn from that. There's certain things in a marriage and, and I want those people to fix it. I don't want everybody to cross the line. That's yeah. what I'm saying. If you're really in love, listen, I was really in love with Jim. I'm not going to mm -hmm. say it was. I think it's clear in the book. I really did love him. I could still say my, getting married the first time, my wedding, my I was madly in love with him, the kids, everything else. But certain things, there was, for some reason, it gets to that point and, and people can fix it. And, right. that, and, and that's really and what it is. I thought it was so interesting that then the, you know, you the business explodes. Yes. You have this great creative idea and it explodes. And so now you have the husband involved, his brother, and your father-in-law. Who was the best. Right. Which also was very interesting because this is kind of the first time I really heard about the father-in-law was in the book. And the book wasn't out when the psychic, psychic. came. And by the way, I, yes. that's what I couldn't believe. That's why she was so amazing. The book wasn't out. I never spoke of him. No. And I don't remember. I've, we've had conversation. I never remember you talking about him. Never. And I've never said his name. And when she pulled that out, I almost fainted. Yeah, I heard that she's like booked until like 2020. Yes. I, I don't know what. Tina Marie is, is booked and she's pretty unbelievable. Because, you know, some people are like, oh, I didn't think it was so great. And I'm like a skeptic of, not a skeptic, but I'm, oh, I kind of am like, mm, sometimes with the Hollywood medium right. and stuff, I was I like, because sometimes the star will go, Oh, there's no way they would have known that. And I literally like Googled it. And I'm like, it was in RuPaul's first book. RuPaul just doesn't remember what RuPaul wrote. But this little tidbit that was on his episode was, so I was a little bit, mm, but I still think that Tyler Henry definitely is talented, but you kind of go, mm, I don't know, you know, and I've had psychics that I don't think are very good. And I've had ones that, that do pick up on something kind of weird, you know, that you're like, like I had this one girl and she was very cute and um and outgoing and my mom came st like strong to her and i was like well my mom would like you because she was kind of shallow about people's <laughs> looks and stuff so i was like and she was like, a hot girl yeah and she was like, like a hot young she's cute coming through this one yeah and she was like young like she just finished college and then all of a sudden we finished the thing and she's like oh your mom's back again she wants she's telling me how you guys were in the same sorority and i'm like of course she'd bring up the sorority thing to this girl, you know? And so I do believe in certain things because there's yeah. no way no one would know about my relationship with my father-in-law. I never right. talked about it with anybody on the show either. Right. So the producers didn't know. No one knew. And Bernie Joseph's, it's not like you're going to look up my ex-husband's father-in-law, father who died, because no one would know our relationship. It right. Just you would, you would maybe normal. think it wasn't good. You, you know? would think it wasn't good because I left a son. No one would know yeah. that. So I was the first person she said it. And she's like, Bernie. I was like, what? I freaked out. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I actually thought that scene was really remarkable as a it viewer. Was. I thought she was definitely talented. I, the things that she was um, bringing up and pointing out, I thought was pretty cool. Um, so w with your with your husband... The other juicy part was Joe was not the first fresh dick you had after no, 20 years. No, no, no. There was a fling. There was a fling. It was With a rock bit. star, which I think well, is pretty great. Yeah, I think that's funny. I'm never allowed to go to a foreigner concert again, Heather. Uh, <laughs> Joe is like, there will be no hot blood and touring for you, Marge. Uh, but I kind of love this story. So you go to the concert. You yes. are like... 
It's like hot girl summer. You're following them around. You're in the front row. You can afford the front row tickets, I guess. Yes. And then you meet them at a restaurant. And I mean, I was also, I was young and I mean, I was still in my early 40s to the fact is I was also kind of cute, thinner, no plastic surgery. And I, I also, they wanted some of the cute ones. You know, how old are the people going to Foreigner, truthfully? They're older than me. Right, yeah. So yeah, you so were, so got, you, you were the hottest, youngest girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let's call, you know, a spade a spade. It's not, not like I was, you know, my competition wasn't fierce. Okay, so when did you decide, I'm going for it? And you said, I got the bikini I was wax. Like, yeah, I got it. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I was at the theater in Red Bank and <laughs> Red Bank, New Jersey <laughs> with my girlfriend. I'm just going to say my girlfriend, Lisa, I don't want to say her last name and her sister, Leslie, but people and Janine who worked for me and we're all there and we're right up in the front da, 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 and then we go to the bar next door. And of course he's there, Kelly Hansen, so handsome. So this, and then of course he saw me in the front row. And I mean, you know, I was on tour with him basically for like two years at this point. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he says to come over to his table, we're chit chatting, whatever it is. And then it's time for me to leave. I'm just like, this is creepy. But I said to Lisa, let's call and see if he's staying at the Molly Pitcher Inn in Red Bank. I said, so of course I call the hotel and I, and I call the hotel and they connect me to his room. I was like, Jesus, talk about not even being discreet. They don't even change the names on the room. Now, are you pretty nervous? My heart would be like in my yes, throat. Yes, my heart was racing. And I leave a message like, hey, if you want to get together, it's Margaret. I was just at the because he's not in his room yet. My phone dies. I get home. There's a message on my phone from him. Come back. Ba, ba, ba. I was like, oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But of course, <laughs> I can't go back. I'm all the way home. Red Bank from my house was just like But now at this, at this point, are you... Did you make like a conscious decision? Like, I'm ready to no. bone someone else. I'm sick of jam. No, 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 no. At this point, okay. it's like a little game. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, all right. It's like, I'm excited. It's my, you know, it's my band crush. I'm like, you know, no, I'm not making a conscious decision at this point. Okay. Yeah, it's like a little game. I didn't think it was really going to happen. Yeah. And then, so then, of course, I can't go back, but I have a cell phone number. Then I see, you know, months later, He's going to be on, uh, I think it was the Today Show in the morning. They're flying in. I text message. I said, oh, I see you're going to be on the Today Show tomorrow morning. Ba, ba, ba. He's like, I'm at LAX. He goes, I'm at LAX right now. I land tonight. Let's have dinner. Okay. Like, wait, LA. So wait, you're in LA? No, he was flying in. He goes, I'm at LAX. I'm oh, just flying into New York. Okay, got it, got flying it. Flying into New York. <laughs> so I was like, then I was like, game on. <laughs> and, at was, that, and at that point during those months, you had even yeah, felt I mean, more my, of a disconnect. It was like, no, it was, I was, we were in couples therapy. Mm -hmm. We were, I knew it was over. I mean, things were just down, downward spiral. This was, Joe was already even working in my house. I mean, this was just like, I was on a, and I was So you were Joe. flirting with Joe, but nothing had happened with Joe. Nothing had happened with Joe. I mean, I was unhinged, you know what so I mean? So when you, so when you have the first bone with <gasps> the rock star. Yes. Was it weird? Like, I have not totally had sex weird. with someone in 20 yes. years. Like, yeah, do I, mean, I even know how to do it with yeah, someone else? I've been naked in front of someone else. And I mean, his ass was half the size of mine. <laughs> I mean, how embarrassing is that? And he had better hair. <laughs> <laughs> and did you feel any guilt the next day or no? Uh, or, were you, or were you proud of yourself? Like, good for uh, you, Marge. It was a Marge. combo. It was a combo. Yeah. It was a little bit of a combo. I mean, you know, when you're in that state of mind, when your marriage is falling apart, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. And I was in a bad way. You know, I was just in a bad way. I didn't know what I was doing with my life. My kids were out. My son was, you know, really basically had his own life. He was a teenager. My business was starting to blow up. My marriage was falling apart. I, I was like, I was like having a mini midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, I just wanted, I just was like, girls gone wild. Yeah. That's and, really what it was. And I also think the other thing that was kind of interesting and, mm -hmm. you know, I love that in the book, after every chapter, there's kind of some words of wisdom or yes, advice or however you want to say it. Yeah. Which I think are really great. Um, but one thing that I thought was interesting, and I remember I had this client because I used to be a realtor and she was getting divorced. And she had a child, she was the second wife, and she had a child with her husband. 
And he said, I don't want the child. If you have the child, you're doing everything. And I mean everything. I won't change a diaper. I won't da 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 da. And she was like, okay, fine. I'm happy to do everything. He really didn't change a diaper. Like, he really didn't do anything. And she was finally like, done. So I guess my question is, you know, he didn't want any more kids. He knew yes. being that you were 20 years younger and you hadn't given birth, that you have to give a woman like you a, a child. I think sometimes women do sometimes trick. I don't want to say trick, but I think sometimes they go into yes, a marriage as a second or third wife and they go, no, I'm good. I don't need my own children. I love that we have this great life and we can yes. travel and I'll be the stepmom. I'll be the hot step grandma one day. Who cares? You know, and then they really get closer to 30 and they're like, wait a minute. No, I don't want this life. I, wa- I want life. this. I deserve this. Why am I sacrificing the, I agree. you know, the gre- greatest thing to not to every woman, but to some women, this is the greatest yes, thing. Yes, no, to me, the greatest thing is being a mother. Yeah. I, that's that's why I said it right from the beginning. No kids, I'm leaving. I was like, I said I'm out. But do you think, like, what would be your advice to someone that is with a man that's kind of saying that? Uh, like, my advice to someone who's, listen, this is what I'm going to say about Jan, though. He's the greatest father in the world. And, he, came, and, he, and he did come around he and everything. He rose to the occasion. Yeah. I always say to him, you didn't get the husband thing right the second time around, but boy, did you get the father thing right. Because to Cooper, the best father, the most devoted, um, that's one thing where great co-parents. I feel like I taught him to be a great father. Not that I taught him, but I think, you know, he was so obsessed. At first, he was so hesitant, but he was just so obsessed once I had him. He was just, you know, devoted, devoted, devoted. But I would, the advice to women is, Don't force the situation. You know, if someone's doing it, just listen. I feel like Jan probably did at first to make it happy. Jan just happens to love, you know, it turned around for me. But I think you have to set right from the beginning. Don't say you're not going to do it. You're just going to be the stepmother. You can't, because you will change your mind. You might change your mind. You might not. But you have to set it right from the beginning. If -hmm. there's a possibility you want children, you have to say it right from the beginning. Because Mm -hmm. things, you don't want that situation. And right. you don't want to feel like, women. yeah, you don't, you don't want to feel, feel like, like someone's doing you a favor. Right. And I think that's, I said it to Jan right in the beginning. I can't remain with you if there's not, if we're not going to have kids. I mean, listen, do I feel like Jan caved and he was like, all right, we can have one kid. I think he did that because he so desperately wanted to stay with me for sure. And were you good with just one or was there a moment where you were like, you know what? I really might want to have one more, but I just know I can't, I can't push um, it. You know, I think... I never even thought about it because I knew that was the deal. And I right. guess because you know what it was? There was a deal. And I never even thought about it again. It's funny because Joe always says it would have been great if we had a kid together as well. But we were older and we didn't do it. I I love, love being a mother. I think people, that's one thing people don't know about me. I, I managed to keep it so quiet that I had my own son. I mean, you knew because I told, you know, I told mm-hmm. you private moments but I just knew it was the deal so I never thought about it I think I blocked it out of my head but every time one of my friends gave birth I, there was a tearful moment mm-hmm. and um with with Joe okay so then I mean let me see there's still so much okay so that was real, that was interesting oh again with the um bar mitzvah mm-hmm. you know that you were like I want this big moment as a mm-hmm. mom you know, ha- I want the, him to have the big party like everybody else. And that was something, again, Jan was kind of like, I've done this, to, you know, I'm over it. And you're like, but <laughs> I, I, I don't care. Like, he deserves it just like the other kids. Were the other kids at all like, wow, you're spending a lot on Cooper's bar mitzvah? Or they yeah. were like, dad, stop it. He should have they a party too. Involved. They were just like, they were, they love him so much. And they're so close. So they're like, they're all best friends and they adore him and worship him. So they were never like that. They were, so, they're, yeah, they mm-hmm. were so devoted and just so rah, rah. They, they were never like that. So what was interesting too is that after you were divorced and with Joe, this opportunity came to have your own reality show, which you had told me about when we were, yes. I think, having lunch by the pool at the Polo Lounge. What yes, a name drop that is. And um and you know, and it's funny because I know Amy Rosenblum. She was for I did this show that was very short lived and for a minute she I was remember. the showrunner. 
You did it with Margaret Cho, right? Yes. And she was a showrunner for a minute, but that didn't work out between her and the other executive producer. But so she's like, this is a reality show and she pitches it and everything. And in that one, your son was okay with being on the camera and everything, right? Well, he was, no, he was okay with me doing the show and knowing about it, but he wasn't going to be on camera. Oh, he was (laughs) never going to be on camera. He was never going to be on camera. He was okay okay that we were going to have our own show. I think he thinks Housewives has a negative connotation and he's very private and he doesn't like displaying any kind of wealth or showing something he never even wanted to post if we're on vacation he has mm-hmm. a weird thing with privacy and uh i think being on housewives he was like i i just can't believe you're doing this <laughs> so how old is he now 25 oh okay so he's out of school and all that now. yeah working successful the whole thing and yeah okay well that's cool and then um so then when you so then it doesn't go but it, but housewives did approach you. Yes. But you were still the contract. You still had a few months left to shop it. Yes. Did you think to go to Amy and say, "Can you let me out of this thing? It doesn't look like it's going to happen." It was with a production company, and mm-hmm. the production company didn't let me out. It wasn't even Amy. It wasn't my agreement with Amy. Right. It was okay. The production company, uh, Sirens called the production company to let me out of it. And the production company said no. And at the time, you were just like, whatever, I guess it's I said, not whatever, I'll get my, you know, in my head, it wasn't as important. I was like, oh, I'll get my own show. Who cares? My business was doing amazing. Uh, uh, hence, no lawsuits at that time. Right. So it didn't even phase me. I was traveling all the time. We had such a beautiful life. It was not a big deal. Right. I was like, all right, you know what? What's meant to be is, I'm very much of what's meant to be is meant to be. A lot of times, time means and, everything. And were you a fan of The Housewives? Did you watch it a lot? Were you familiar with all the cities? I was not familiar with all the cities. Of course, I watched Jersey to a point, and then I had stopped watching it for a while. And Joe and I were New York watchers, which is kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, and you did say that you met Ramona, and he was so excited to meet Ramona, Joe. But yes. I, tell me how it went when, when they tried Joe to get the- Joe loved Ramona. His favorite housewife till I got on the show was Ramona. He just thought she was hysterical. He said she looked all over. She said she could say whatever she wants. And then she met, and then she didn't want to take a picture with him. We're in a bed together. And he was so like, I go, Ramona, get up. You know, I had to like, and then she got up and took a picture. Now, of course, Ramona and I have a great banter now, but he was like, I was so pissed off that day. I was like, are you insane? Have you lost your marbles that you're not going to take a picture, you know, with my husband? Right. Yeah. But that, you know, that's a common story. I don't know why. She's just, I, her, like, unawareness is kind of, it's really real. It's kind I of know. crazy, I you know? know. And listen, she is so, and I'm not even mad at her. It's, it's kind of funny. She she called, they FaceTimed the other day. She was with Julius, who does my hair. She goes, that Mary Josephs, she, what, she was complimenting me, but she called me that Mary Josephs. <laughs> Uh, I love her hair this way, Julius. So they had a FaceTime me. She goes, don't tell her, don't tell her. And I left, I go, Ramona, you kill me. And you know what? That's what makes her a star. So she's very funny. Now, you know, they're, they all just left for Turks and Caicos. Mm-hmm. Now, um, if they had asked you, would you have gone? Oh, totally. I would have loved to be there. I think this is going to be really fun I think it's going to gonna be fabulous. I think yeah. it's going to be fun to watch. I mean, So maybe I the next one. Yeah, I think it's the right mix of sugar and spice. Yes, yes. Um, They said somebody wrote like, oh, the story is, which of course anyone could could just write this and assume this, but that, you know, Ramona ran and got the best room first. Well, who wouldn't? Of course. Well, she does that. I think that's just so fun. I would love if she did do that because these girls are going to go berserk. Yeah, it's going to be, it'll it'll be fun. Um, Okay, so when you... um, God, there's still so- okay. The other thing that was featured on the show was the sleeping with the boss. Yes. And so I was reading it, and um, now was it was just the one boss while you were at Fitum, right? Or was there another one? Uh, there was another boss uh, when I was at FIT that I, yes. that I slept with. But um, and do you think because that, that was happened, coerced. that was coerced? Women could, and I didn't talk about that on the show. Mm-hmm. It was very, very common. That was uncomfortable. It's funny. My FIT people, uh, my dear friends from college reached out to me. They were so upset because they knew what was had gone on. 
I spoke about my garment center boss. There was okay. so much sexual harassment then. Um, and then there was a backup, like why it happened, which didn't come out on the show. You know, something gross happened to me when I was 12, which I, I wrote in the book about, which is mm -hmm. that part was edited out. I think it was a little too dark for housewives, which people read in the book, but it was, it was upsetting. Listen, women could have sexual promiscuous behavior. Women could dress sexy. That doesn't give someone the right to someone in a position of power to um, who's so much older than them. You know what I mean? A and intimidate them into doing something. I wasn't raped. I'm not saying that, but I am saying someone in a position of power did something to me. I'm not a victim. Right. I just thought it was interesting when you were like, he was little and I had to do it. And it was five minutes out of my day or whatever. And yeah. That, that was, oh, that was, yeah, that was the one in college. That was uh, yes. the one in college. And it was, and I just, it was very commonplace. I put it, I compartmentalized it and I was like, and I'm going to move it forward, <laughs> you know, because I didn't know how to handle it. But how long did that go on? Like how many times did you have to just do it? No, my boss from uh, my, my first job was once my boss at uh, B. Altman's, which I'm going to say the company, which I didn't say in my book, um, was like two or three times. And then I, I thank God, I like circumvented the situation. And that was very gross, very upsetting. Um, it was funny because I saw my girlfriend from FIT the other day and she had come to see me there. Um, and she remembers him asking us for a threesome. I don't even remember that. I must have blocked that out. God. And it's so, cr and we were both young. And she goes, that fucking creep had asked us for, I go, I don't even remember that. You know, there was, she goes, Margaret, it was so upsetting. And you were so freaked out. Like I, it was hard for me to remember some of the stuff. It was such a different, Heather, it was so, no matter where you went, it's like, it could have trashed your reputation. Like in the garment center, everybody had a mistress. Everybody I knew, every boss had a mistress. Every company operated like that. This I know this happened to numerous of my numerous women, my girlfriends, incessant my girlfriends. You know, I said someone got the warehouse girl pregnant, uh, and he had a wife and a mistress. It was just they would trash your reputation. There was no chance you were getting a job again. And I just was like, I'm just gonna deal with it, forget about it, and move on. And and I the only reason I mentioned is it was just like this is what happened to me. I dealt with it. It's a conversation women should have with their daughters. No one even told me this was going on. It's, you know what I mean? It's like, I never spoke to my mother about it. No one forewarned me. No one told me how to handle it. So that's, that's why I brought it up. I wasn't trying to get anybody in trouble. I didn't even use the real names. No, I'm not. And I understand all that. I just was like, I always just think it's kind of, and I'm not trying to make light of it, but I always think it's kind of awful. Yeah. So like, like you have to sleep with the guy and still do the work. Yeah, I know. Like, I what feel like if you're sleeping with somebody, like, it should be that you're like a kept woman or a mistress or a, yeah, you know, course. a girlfriend experience or a hooker light or something. But, like, you actually still have to show up at 8 a.m. and, like, fold the sweaters. No. Jesus. I yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, thank God I wasn't <laughs> folding sweaters. And listen, that's my whole point. Like, I could do it. Like, so when she said I slept my way to the top, I'm like, I own my own company for the last 21 years. Don't diminish that I didn't work like an animal. It wasn't yeah. so I could, you know, sleep my way to the top. It was part of the job. So I, it, it was just like, you were doing that. So, you know, it didn't matter. They didn't compensate you for your, for your smarts. It was just like, so you didn't lose your job and trash your reputation all over town and blackball you, you know? So that's what it was. So I'm just saying, it's just like, so now we can teach people to be stronger, tell them to speak up and shut up. I'm not saying everybody's a victim. I'm not saying every man's a predator. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, this is what happened. No one told me how to handle it. That's how I handled it. And I moved it forward. I'm not a victim well, of it. And, and also with these guys, whether it's Harvey Weinstein or whatever, yeah. you know that along the way with all the girls that eventually did speak up and thank God yeah. got him convicted, a lot of women went along with it yes you wouldn't, you wouldn't keep trying for 20 years if every single one you really you know it got to a place of forcible stuff there were a lot of women along the way that obviously were complying because they found themselves in the situation or thought you know what i'm just going to do it this once because i want this part but then after that the world's going to see what a great actress i am and i never have to do this again and i'm going to use all the assets i have and one of that is being a beautiful woman so it's like I think sometimes it's 
it's conscious and sometimes, sometimes it's not conscious. Yeah, I agree. Sometimes conscious and not conscious. Yeah. I, think when, I agree with you. And that's what I'm saying. But in my situation at that time, it was such like a mind fuck. Right. Because I was just, listen, my job at that company was to go to the stores, see the trends, buy garments. It was a knockoff house, right? I didn't, I was being taught the ropes. Literally my first or second day on the job, I'm there with my boss He's teaching me the ropes. We're shopping the stores. And he goes, I have to make a stop at my apartment. Everyone's like, why'd you go back to his apartment? Because he said he has to make a stop at his apartment. I'm carrying, we're carrying shopping bags. I had no idea what was going to happen. I was so caught off guard, you know, and I didn't know how to handle it. So that's why I put in there to just show women how to handle it. I'm not like sitting here crying about it years later, but it, it's, it, it did happen to me. I buried it. I never talked about it again, but I'm just like, listen, shit like this went on. And even someone who's as strong as me with the biggest mouth and, and could speak up now, couldn't do it then. Well, I had a girlfriend and we met, we were assistant buyers right out of college, but it was not for me. She, we both left. Well, I got fired and she moved on. <laughs> and she, she had a great job at a company that's run by two brothers. I'll just say that. And she loved her job. It involved traveling. It involved going to the different stores. She finally got a job she was really good at, liked, and it was good money. And she walked into one of the brother's offices, and he was little and she was tall. And he's like, oh, is that the, the new bodysuit that we have? And she had like a blazer over it. And she goes, yes. And then before she even knew what happened, he grabbed her tit and like twisted her nipple like and stuck his tongue down her throat and oh. she was so shocked and she was like oh my god you know and she just was like got rid of him and got out of there now he never called her into his office again never hit on her again because i think the rejection was he was like oh this isn't gonna happen but obviously a lot of other people complied exactly. you know and they, and she's and she's like even this one woman she was a single mom and I and she would always go into his office, and I think something was going on with her, unfortunately. Yeah, and that poor and, woman thought she would probably the single mom probably thought she'd lose her job. She used to yeah. support her kid. Mm -hmm. and she was intimidated, and that's my point. It's like people take advantage of those situations, and that's like unacceptable. And women, you know, it happens to men too. And the thing, the thing that people don't get, especially men, is when she was crying to me about it that day. Like, I remember it like yesterday. We've talked about it since, but it was, you know, 25 years ago. And she goes, but I love my job. I know. But I love my job. Now what do I do? You know, and that's where I'm like, when people are like, well, then quit. Then make a complaint. Then, then, then. I know. Like, that's how, how, I how many jobs have you had that you loved, especially in your 20s, and then you find one that you really love, that you're really good at, that the money is good, that you see a future in, and then this freaking thing happens. And you're like, oh, fuck, you know? Exactly. One of my best friends in the world, that company that I stayed at, is my my friend Vicky, who was like, I wrote about, she was my mentor. We're still extremely close, and she was there. I would have never met her. You know, so many things came out of that job for me right. also. Some of my closest yeah. relationships. So it's just... It happens, and I and I didn't want to leave. I learned so much there. Right. So I let's met talk a, Jan there. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about the housewives, and so um, so then they do come back around. You get on the show. I thought this was funny when you said um, you didn't know Ziggy that well, Ziggy uh, that well, but you were kind of going to be the friend. She was going to introduce yes. you to the group, and um, so you were friendly, but you weren't great friends. And so you're like, oh, great. We're going to be these good friends. Who do you suggest for hair and makeup when we film in Boca Raton? And she's like, find your own hair and makeup or whatever. Like, didn't give you any suggestions <laughs> yes. yet. She says she's the queen of Boca. And I thought that was really funny because I've been friends with Jill Zarin for many years. And yes. Jill, I just interviewed her when she was in town. And she said, you know, back then, you know, all of us had deals, and, and Jill really is a sharer of information. It's so it's, great. She's so good to me. I just want to add that in. I love her, and she's a doll. Yes, and she really is that Jewish mother that sometimes, like, you know what you should do, Heather? You should do this. You should do this. Let me hook you up with this. I mean, she really is. So there was some dresses that Ramona was getting, and she and, she and Luann were like, oh, can we have that contact? You know, because this is back in the days when they're not making a lot of money, and 
you know, they're running out of outfits and no, people aren't giving it to them like they are now. You know, I'm sure everyone's DMing people to like, please wear my product, you know. Yes. And she was like, no, that's for me. And now from in my Ramona head, which I've said there's things about Ramona that do remind me of myself. I'm like, <laughs> I think in Ramona's head at that time, she was like, I don't want everyone wearing the same outfit. Yes, the E. Say Laurent or whatever it was. I'm sure it wasn't that nice. But let's say it was, you know, Diane von Furstenberg. I don't want everyone wearing a wrap whatever. dress that I yes. might wear. I want to be the one person that's kind of this is my style. But it's like, then say that. Just yeah, say like, but, you know, like, okay. But hair and makeup yes, is totally exactly. different. Hair and makeup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, it, was, it was actually kind of mean. It was more yeah. than mean. No, it's just it's like not being helpful. It's it was it, to me. It shows that weird jealousy thing. It was um, so bizarre. I could never be that way to anybody. If anybody calls me for anything, any of the girls. I mean, even Jennifer, who I didn't even get along. If she calls me for anything, which is very rare, but she has asked me for suggestions for stuff. I text her any information she ever needs. Give her anything she would ever ask me for. I'm just not that girl. I could never do that to anybody. And especially I was a new housewife and I was like, wow, she's a shithead. Yeah. I was like, this girl, this woman's a complete asshole. And you guys never, you're still, it would still be awkward if you saw her at. Awkward, your... awkward for her. She should okay. leave. If I, if I walk in a room, she will run out the door. Oh, and she, she does. does. And by the way, she should. But has it happened? <laughs> um, It's only happened a few years ago. I went to my, Hair salon where I get my nails done. I was nice. I acknowledged her. She couldn't even acknowledge me. She left. I was in a restaurant. She ran out. Mm. She's, a, she's a coward. I could really say horrible things about her. I'd take that psycho Danielle back before I take her back. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's saying something. Um, And so let me, so this season I'm watching it, obviously. Yes. And... I noticed that a lot of fans are kind of like, in the last couple of years, get a better storyline. Her storyline's fake. Storyline, storyline, storyline. Yeah, what and, is it? And we've talked to enough Housewives and Reality Stars that, yes, before you start filming, they sit you down and they say, what have you got going on this year? Well, I'm planning a bar mitzvah and my mother-in-law is turning 75. We're going to have a big bash. Whatever. Exactly. Yes. But I think... My question to you is, like, as someone who loves watching the show, I don't like that um, some of the housewives, not not to just not just New Jersey, other ones, are feeling this pressure to have a new storyline every year because that isn't real life. That's not real life. And if I you're happily like married and you're working your job and you're in your same house, you're not going to have a a monumental thing happen every freaking year. I think certain. I think everybody has something going on at at one point in their life. And every some years are bigger than others. Everybody is busy at different times. I think certain franchises, um, unfortunately, have more things going on. I, like New York, I don't think it's just about them. With us, it's about our whole families. Do you, do you know what I'm right. saying? Right. Well, yeah, not the New York girls, no one has a, a husband or a boyfriend. Nobody yeah. does. So we have so many more insillier characters on yeah. our show that I think with the fans, there's more um, pressure to <laughs> what's going on with her. Oh, yeah. she's so boring. She has no storyline. What's your storyline? I mean, I don't even know what that means. It's like, this is our real life. Like you're yeah, saying. Yeah, that, that's what I... I mean, yes, know. I was lucky. This year, you know, I was writing a book. I have... This was really going on in my life. I was writing a book. I am finally... Joe, you'll see a big reveal at the end of the year. Thank God the, you know, lower level of my house is finally done. But... You know what like, I think... I wasn't I, finished... I'm sorry, ahead. Heather. No, go ahead. I wasn't finishing my house for the show. I'm not feeling pressure to do something just for TV. That That's not me. Mm hmm I feel like, um, you know, in certain years what can be helpful is maybe a housewife does address that they were suicidal or whatever and then that's kind of their year where they're addressing it and those type of things I think are good but yes. and you know like one of the one of the comments is is Joan was Joe and Melissa's fight really real were yes. they really having issues and I'm I'm gonna tell you right now and I okay. would say it and it's not because I'm good friends with her believe me they minimized on camera what was going on. They cut out a lot of it because 
it was intense mm -hmm. and I'm not kidding. And, and I think this is like Melissa's fake storylines is because cast members would come after that for her saying, oh, that was fake. That was fake, which is unacceptable because it wasn't fake. And I think that's gotten out there and people say stupid shit like that. This was very real. This is like, you know, it happens in a marriage, right? They had a traditional marriage to start out with. Melissa's on a show. Her fame has grown. Her business has grown. Envy's out there. She is going to start licensing. I, I've done some stuff. That she's she has a lot going on. And Joe Gorga is like, listen, a traditional Italian guy. And he sees his, right? And it yeah. is true. I think he really was feeling something. I even said to him, are we doing this on camera? I got nervous. I was like, holy crap. And I was like, like to them, like, you know, and she was like, I don't give a shit. You know, they were having really stuff going on and it played out on camera. And I think that's normal in any marriage. So I don't know why people aren't relating to it. Okay, this like, is why, this is why I think, this is what I think. I have hung out with them too. Yes. And I I believe that these, the the arguments and the fights and stuff are real. I think- as You have, watched, we've been together. Yeah, but, but I think why people are calling a little bit bullshit and you and and maybe I'm wrong mm -hmm. is as a real housewife detective. Okay, yes. <laughs> I was like, this fight happened that she's working too much and this and that during the pandemic. So I'm like, for the last four months, they were home. She wasn't doing red carpets. Instagramming, so it felt Instagramming, Instagramming, always on her phone, posting, oh. Instagramming, not in the moment. Okay, okay, like, then that makes the more sense. Before, you know. Like she was on, he was bitching. She was on the red carpet before that, you know, before the pandemic. But then, you know, listen, she has to keep the momentum going. So she's trying to sell shit online. She's on her phone. She's not in the moment. She's disconnected. She's Instagramming. You know what I mean? So she Okay, has to well, keep then the that makes more sense. Because I was a little bit, but I was like, why is, does he have an issue with her working so much when he's at that time right before the pandemic? Um, attempting to do stand up, doing, you know, big media tours, wrote a book. I'm like, he's a star in his own right, too. But maybe that was the argument. Maybe she was like, look at you, you hypocrite. I don't know. I you know, know, they both, know. They both are stars. Think, They're both stars in their you know, own they right. Both, and they both are stars in their own right. But yeah. I think men, not all men, but some men get a little bit um, insecure, upset yes. when they're women all of a sudden their star power grows. Yeah. I mean, and and it, and I and it was real. And I think that's really what it was. And it's just I don't think he knew how to explain it correctly when he's like it's her work, it's this, it's that. Basically, it's just like don't forget about me. I feel neglected. That's really what it was. Yeah. And then um the other thing people were kind of like why did she, why did she have to keep talking about her daughter's sex life? And I think people felt for the daughter a little bit. Now, the daughter could have been in on it. The daughter could have sat down with her before and, and been like, I'm fine if you can bring this up on camera. I'm fine, mom. I know I'm a virgin. I don't care. Um, but I think for people, it was like, God, that is such an embarrassing thing to talk about. I, but I think it's embarrassing to talk about. But I think it's also a conversation that so many people, I think there was a real conversation like, I'm sure it was uncomfortable. Obviously, it was uncomfortable for Melissa too. Mm -hmm. I think it's such a conversation that everybody's so awkward to talk about. So many people have an awkward time talking about it with their kids, right? And everybody's so conflicted. So I think it's it was one of those just like have the conversation and you know and that's it. And I think that's really what it was. So it was I think she was uncomfortable doing it too. But she was like, I'm gonna have this conversation. I, I would do it in private, but you know what? This is my real life and, right. I'm, and I'm gonna just do it anyway. And I think it shows other people like it's okay to do it. Maybe not on, you know, listen, so much plays out on camera. Yeah, and I mean, that is a major part of someone's life when that their daughter is- That is a major is, part of someone's life yeah. with their daughter, like talking about their sex life and use protection. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a conversation that everyone should have. And I think it's, people should be having it younger because it's not something that we should brush under the rug and just say they should learn in health class. Yeah, I mean, I had it with my stepdaughter, too, and I was very much like, and I tell people this, like, no matter how cool you think you are, they may not want to go to you. So I was always like, you have your aunt's number, you have your godmother's number. You don't, ha if you don't want to involve me when that time comes, then you don't have to, you know, just go to somebody. 
Exactly. And you I know, think that's so, what it is. I think, you know, yeah. Melissa, I could clearly, she was like nervous and embarrassed also. Yeah. And what it was your opinion of the Frank and Dolores and David threesome? Because you guys posted a photo the other night. I was with them last night. Yeah. You guys <laughs> just had dinner with that My Two Husbands spinoff sitcom that's going to be happening. I don't know what. <laughs> I I love it. I think it's great. You know what? Uh, she manages to handle it well. It, you know, it's just very normal. It's just it just very, It very feels normal. like they're a sister and brother. It is. They're just very. They've been good together. They, knew, they were married for so. You know, they they got together so young. You know, he wasn't a good husband. They got divorced young, he and was, then yeah. you know. And so I think it's like I don't. When people say I want to see them together and this and that, I'm like I don't think they ever will be together. No, in they'll a never be way. together again. They will never be together again. They don't have that sexual chemistry, but yeah. they have that. They love each other. They're very good friends. They give each other great advice. And it's just a great friendship and they're great co-parents. They're great parents together. And I think that's really what it is. And David loves Frank. And it's funny. And David has a very big personality. I think it doesn't come through on the camera, but Joe and I love having dinner with them. He's so fun. We we laughed the whole night. We had a great night last night and it's a good time. I know it's a lot of, they're fun. Yeah. And then how do you feel about Teresa's new love of her life? I see he just celebrated a birthday and she gave him, a billion balloons and a Rolex, and well, I'd I like to even date see the Rolex. Jeez. Oh, I'd like to date Teresa. Yes, she had a table of him standing in front of all these gifts. I saw that. I saw that. I DM'd and I said, "Happy birthday to Louis." Uh, I didn't see the Rolex. Jesus, that's fancy. Yeah, I don't give. Jo I didn't give Joe a Rolex, but he doesn't even wear a watch. I know. I don't really. I don't wear a watch either. I have a couple watches, but I don't really wear. I only wear it if I'm like want to. I don't know. Look rich and go out. I know. For I the know, most part, I it's just my phone. I don't wear a time. watch. I don't wear a watch. Or neither does Joe. But how do you guys all feel about that? Being that you know you have the love of your life, you know, second husband, and she certainly seems to be very in love. I'm very happy that she's happy. I, mm -hmm. I want everything to be good for her. I really do. I only want Teresa to be happy. She's suffered enough. So I just want everything. I really want everything great for her. Yeah. I think it's kind of interesting that, you know, early in the sh earlier in the show, before they both had to go away and all of that, she would, you know, talk a lot about, oh, how much sex they're having and all this. But then she revealed, like, I didn't have a um, a PDA or relationship yeah. i didn't have a, or not even a pda not even in public no, you're right that's they what didn't, we didn't you're have right. an affectionate oh you know hand on the ass i can't get enough of you kind of thing they had sex but not affection yes and so i just thought that was kind of interesting because i'm like she is affectionate she, they, these two cannot keep their hands off each other and you got to really and i think that's kind of great when you find someone that's that level the same yeah, you know. they, they have that level. They have that energy. I mean, and I thought Joe and I were lovey-dovey. I mean, when we were first together, these, these two are like on fire. So do you think that will be her storyline next season? Oh, Getting sure. married. <laughs> Getting I married. Mean, I don't know if they're going to run and get married. I mean, they could. I mean, that would be pretty amazing. That would be great. But I think definitely this will be, you know, Teresa's in love. I think they will get married. Yeah, I think, because, I mean, I don't because, know, year, but they will get married, but I don't know if it'll be right away. Well, because he was divorced, but he also had two other fiancés. So I think he's a man that likes to be coupled and likes to be married. Yes. So those didn't work out. So I think, I, I, I really think she'll be engaged by the summer. That's my yeah. prediction. Wow. Well, that is very I'm, I'm a psychic too. You are a psychic. You are so, a psychic. And then all of next year we'll be planning the wedding. Okay, listen, I'm, I mean, I'm in. I love a good party. And the four daughters give her away. I mean, that would be very, very sweet. Yeah. But just we need to know, is Juicy Joe going to show up? That's what we need to know. I think there'll be a lot of conversation, but in the end, he won't come. No. I'm sure it would be very heartbreaking for him. Yeah. And, well, maybe Joe, maybe Joe the brother would give her away. But I kind of like, no, I no, think I Joe think the brother will, no, I think yeah. Joe, her brother, will give her away and the girls will all be the bridesmaids. Yes. And maybe you guys will be, but maybe maybe we no, don't, don't have to think, do that. Maybe we don't have to do that to you guys. No, we, at this you know point. what? I don't think Teresa has <laughs> genuine friendships for years. Gen Teresa has genuine friendships for years. When you were talking about your genuine friendships in the book, 
I do think that must be hard to maintain them because I I have heard, like I was talking to Faye Resnick one time and she and Kyle are like, you know, best friends that have been for years. But the time that I ran into her, I'm like, how's Kyle? She's like, you know, when they're filming, she just has no time. I just don't get to see her. It's true. Their friendships haven't suffered because, you know, they have a 35 year friendship. But it's like, I think that must be hard for other housewives that have really good girlfriends and then they become a star and so many nights and trips and everything are with the co-stars of the show and then and then you even said I don't get invited to everything yeah. like I used to because they think oh well Marge she's so busy you know yeah it's you know I have friendships like my friends from from forever and the kid my kids who I they grew up with the mothers I was just at a birthday party thank god the other day I still travel with my girlfriends off season but during season I don't get invited to everything and then I see them in pictures I'm like uh, you know I'm not with my girlfriends because I have such strong bonds them so it is very hard to maintain everything so it, it's it's painful but I will say my girlfriends will show up at every event I have these girls now, are, are amazing supportive girls now are, is any because I've noticed throughout the years with other housewives that they're friends, you know, obviously nobody could come to stuff this year with a pandemic, but but even though you guys were filming, so there weren't the parties where you'd see people, normal people in the background. But, you know, I know that people's friends do get sick of going to the on-camera parties. You know, I will say I was very lucky. <laughs> I know they do. My friends are not like that. They're That's so, good. They're, I have really good girlfriends. They're just like, you're having an on-camera party? You need we're coming we don't care we love you because after my party goes down we stay late at night because yeah. i i keep it going all night because i'm just i'm a very big entertainer so i love to stay up all night and party people don't leave my house till three in the morning mm -hmm. so but my friends know that so they know once the cameras go down the party's not over so that's why they still come now when the cameras go down is it like a bolo situation and no no no, just no, kidding. no no i know i know no, no. I, they I, thought I those like cameras that. were down. Yeah, they thought, no, 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 we're not like that. But I'm, I love to dance and eat and have people over and, you know, I just keep it going. Okay, the last thing I was going to ask you about, which was just so incredibly stressful, I don't know how you even are dealing with all the, dealt with all these crazy lawsuits. It's just oh. absolutely horrible. I know. Isn't that the worst? Hold on. I just want to, hold on. What's going on here? My screen went a little tinier. Um no, it's just, it was very, very stressful. It was horrible because prior to me being on this show and the lawsuits, I was in St. Bart's. I was renting villas. My business was doing amazing. I had a beach house rented. Joe and I were traveling all over. My life was great and I didn't take proper care of myself. I was paying my ex-husband alimony. I thought I was never going to, you know, hit a bump and I hit a bad bump. And I was like, but this isn't even my fault, but that doesn't mean shit. Right. Right. So it was very stressful, but I'm one of those people who could cry about it for a day and then I have to put everything into action. What am I doing? What, how am I getting out of this? What, and are just, they done? Are they done now? Yeah, or, the, or still the lawsuits are done, but I'm just still paying my attorneys and, you know, paying, Yeah, you know, a payment, you know, big chunks every quarter, do it, get it over with almost done. And so and where, just, where does your, all your Macbeth stuff, where is it now? Cause it's kind of a lot to follow in the book though. I find it very interesting because it's a business I'm not aware of. Yeah. So it's, like it's everywhere it's, um, we sell to, I also have candy couture, you know, I have my sub brand. So I have candy couture and Walmart, which is doing really, really well. Beauty line and Walmart, like, you know, makeup brushes and, and beauty blenders and things like that. That actually, that business is growing, which I'm excited about. Um, Macbeth collection, which is, which is my main, uh, my main brand that's in Burlington, Ross, Home Goods, TJ Maxx, stores like that. So that's all over there. I, one thing I thought too was interesting is when your husband said to you, like, this doesn't make sense to keep your original partner. So yes. He had a, he had and, a point. He, he was right. And it was painful. That was hard for me. And I remember you just said, she still hates me. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, the what is your advice in that? Because I do think it's so hard, especially with women, sometimes when you come up with something and it is fun to do it with someone, you know, um, well, there's a lot of people that have a co-host on a podcast, you know, now. And it's like, and they I break up and... Yes, I, go. I don't think you should go into business with friends. You could be friends after you go into business. 
Mm -hmm. But I think you both have to have skin in the game. It's very hard when money and friendship get involved together. Now, P.S., I have not always taken my advice because I've done shit after the fact, but mm -hmm. it just doesn't work out. You can become friends after you're in business together. Yeah. But if it, if it's, but you have to separate business and friendship, and that's very, very hard. And if you're friends first, it's it's very difficult to make it work. I think you can become friends after. I I've learned now not to do anything. I mean, I've done investments with friends, and then it doesn't work out. People lose money, then they sue me. I mean, it's been a disaster with me with this shit. Yes. So now do you? But now do you think that now you really I know, will? and I tell everybody you could become friends after. Right. But, and I think very, very, very tight contracts, even if it's without a lawyer, tight, but you wrote contracts. it yourself, you know, no, like you need a good lawyer and very tight, tight contracts. I agree. But it's very hard because everyone gets offended if you're friends. I mean, you cannot help but take things personally. And mm -hmm. it's very difficult. And that's why it's hard. So what I about hiring friends? Nope. I agree. Nope. Uh, I, I will not hire friends. Have you? I will. I will help friends endlessly. Have but have you hired friends in no. the past? No. Oh, so you haven't made that. Mistake. I hired them at trade shows and to do stuff like and, a like a one time gig thing, but yeah, not like, like an employee. Just like a few weeks, yeah, like not a permanent employee. No. Yes. Listen, Lexi has been. I think this is the good thing. Lexi's been with me for twelve years. Now she's like my sister. I and she's the, I trust her implicitly. All my employees now have been with me forever, but now they're like our family. I mean, I was in the delivery room with Lexi, uh, so it was just yeah. But <laughs> we all were. But I, I no, do not. I don't hire friends. I just can't. You, it's too close. It's just like it's just it crosses a boundary that's not good. Yeah, I agree. I had a lesson that I learned as well. Um, this has been so fun. The book is great. I love you. Thank there's you. so there's so much more. I just touched on some of the bigger stories, but the details are great. They're funny. There's surprising stuff in there. I really, really enjoyed it. And I'm not Thanks. just saying that. I so, appreciate coming from you. That means so much, Heather. And I can't wait to be together. I mean, Jesus, I got to get myself on a plane. Yeah. Let me know when you come out here. Oh, and absolutely. This, and um, so everybody get the book. It's Caviar Dreams on a Tuna Fish Budget. Not on a, but Tuna Fish Budget. And it's really great. And then follow Margaret and also... And then also your podcast. You have a podcast. Yes, Caviar Dreams, Tuna Fish Budget. It's all yeah, it's about all the same name. I love it. Disruptors. Yeah, so you, you can't screw it up. Yes. Well, everybody, get Margaret's book. Also, go to heathermcdonald.net to join Patreon and to look up my upcoming dates. Next show is Miami Improv in June. And then I'm going to announce all my fall dates in the next week or two. So you want to be on that. heathermcdonald.net. Thank you.